Welcome to part two of my video series on the Wahoo Kicker bike. Part one, we looked at the unboxing and building of the bike to get it all together. Part two, we're looking at getting my fit applied to this bike so I can go from outside to my inside bike and get the most out of my training. Over on the Wahoo website, they call it True Fit with five points of adjustment on the Wahoo Kicker bike. Well, there's actually six, let's go through them. First up, they list reach, which is the horizontal distance from the front tip of the saddle to the center of the handlebars. That's one point of measurement. Now, the tip of the saddle is a weird one because now we've got stubby nose saddles, which make things a little shorter. I go from the center of the saddle pretty much, but we have reach to play with. We have stack height, the vertical distance from the center of the bottom bracket to the center of the handlebar, pretty much how far you drop your handlebars down. Um, spaces, I guess. A lot of people will slam their stem. That's kind of what we're looking at there. Setback is the horizontal distance from the front tip of the saddle, front tip of the saddle again, to the center of the bottom bracket. Saddle height, probably the most important one, which is from the center of the bottom bracket to the midpoint of the saddle. That's pretty much where I measure everything from myself. Standover height, which can be adjusted on the bike, which lifts the whole thing up and down, which gives a lot more room for larger saddle heights or shorter bikes. You'll see that in a minute, it can really compress down. And we have crank length, which we have five different options there on the kicker bike from 165 through 175. There are three methods provided by Wahoo within the app to get our bike fit onto the kicker bike, starting off with a professional bike fit. Now, if you've had a guru fit, a retool fit, or a trek bike fit, and others will be added soon, there are two or three hour session with a professional bike fitter. The final report you get from any of those professional bike fits will have a long list of numbers, and you can enter those numbers into the Wahoo app wizard for the kicker bike fit, and it will give you your fit settings to adjust the bike for your specific numbers. That's probably the most accurate way to get things done. Secondly, there's the outside bike geometry option, which takes the measurements from your outdoor bike as best as possible and tries to apply them to the kicker bike. Now we'll go through that from start to finish today. And thirdly, there is body measurement, which you can enter your user height, your inseam length, and you have three different options of how you'd like to ride a bike, whether you want to race, endurance or a more relaxed fit. The body measurement option is a good ballpark or a starting point. It's a good option for those who may be just getting into cycling and aren't quite sure about saddle heights and reach and things like that. Or maybe for somebody who's never cycled before and wants to throw their leg over and give the kicker bike a shot. So maybe your neighbor, partner, your kids, or anyone. Before jumping over to the Llama Lab and getting everything configured for my bike fit, I thought I'd answer a few questions that have come through from multiple sources. And those are, firstly, what's the Q factor of the bike? How far are the pedals apart? What's the minimum and maximum saddle heights? What's the bar width and the clamp size? And what's the saddle details that comes with the bike? Well, first of all, the Q factor of the bike is 150 millimeters. A standard road bike is 147 millimeters, so it's not far off that. And a mountain bike is 170 millimeters. So the kicker bike is more towards the road bike uh, side of things and you really won't notice any difference at all there. Minimum and maximum saddle heights. Here are the details. Wahoo have initially published minimum and maximum rider heights, but that's the overall rider, not their legs and their preferred heights. Here's what I've measured in the Llama Lab this week. So minimum saddle height, all the way down to 565 millimeters, 56 and a half centimeters, 22.2 inches compressed all the way down. The maximum saddle height measured in the Llama Lab with everything stretched out as per spec was 902 millimeters, 90.2 centimeters from center bottom bracket to the top of the saddle right in the middle or 32.2 inches if that's how you measure things. There's possibly more height to be had here because the seat post clamp is 27.2 mil. So it's a standard seat post clamp and if you wanted even more height than that you could probably throw something else in the mix. The supplied handlebars are 42 centimeters center to center measurement, and they have a stem clamp of 31.8 millimeters, which is oversized, and the stem is 90 millimeters long and negative seven degrees. And finally, the saddle details. It's a Velo branded saddle, which is 275 millimeters long and 130 millimeters wide. I'd call it a standard road bike saddle, and probably the first thing you'll be swapping out if you're spending long hours on this bike. Okay, so there's some details and some answers already. Let's jump over and get this thing sized up. First up today, I'll show you the minimum settings of everything on the Wahoo Kicker bike. So reach, setback, seat post as far down as it can go to the smaller setting. The standover all the way down and the stem is slammed. So here's the minimum bike fit or the smallest sizing for the Wahoo Kicker bike. So we have 565 millimeter seat height we have 550 mil reach from center saddle to center bars and a 545 millimeter drop 
from bars to the center bottom bracket there. And the cranks are also 165 mil at the shortest setting. So there's the smallest. Now removing all the graphics and just overlaying a very small road bike frame. And you can see there, the kicker bike does accommodate very small riders. That's a 46 centimeter road frame, I believe. Okay, next up to the other end of the scale, let's move everything to maximum. So standover height all the way up, setback all the way out, seat post all the way up to the minimum insert, the official minimum insert, it can go a little higher. Reach all the way out and stem all the way up. There we go, an absolute high tower of a device there. So the maximum fit, the largest sizing of the Wahoo Kicker Bike, 902 millimeters, so just over 90 centimeter saddle height. 790 reach from the middle of the saddle to the middle of the bars. And 760 drop from the center of the bars to the center bottom bracket with the horizontal there. And the crank length, 175 mil. Again, removing all the decals and doing a large bike frame overlay of a 61 centimeter frame just as a reference point here, and you can see the kicker bike does go quite a bit higher. Now scale may be a little bit out here or there, but it does represent how high this thing can go. Next up, I'll remove the kicker bike from the picture. It does have wheels in the back. You can get that out of screen, and we'll bring in my road bike and grab the sizing from that so we know what we're working with to fit everything up. So my GP Llama road bike sizing for the giant TCR, Saddle height, 775 millimeters, 730 reach, and 606 drop to the center bottom bracket there with 172.5 mil cranks. So that's the frame size I need to replicate. Now there's, uh, there's many different ways to measure a frame and get it all right with setback and other uh, stack height and things like that. This gets me ballpark, this gets me enough or else the video will go too long if I dived into every single piece of information that I required. So this is a good start. So what we're going to do is go outside and use the wizard to try and size this bike up with the app. So measure my bike option here. It wants me to crouch down. On the left, there was a little spirit level there, which lines everything up and away we go. We've taken the photo of the bike. Now we need to move the finger around on the screen here. Now I've got to say, this is not really that precise. It does depend on the phone that you have and how fat your fingers are. It does take me a little bit to really get these lined up into the right spot. You can drag everywhere on the screen. It does have the magnifier. You can see they're lining up with the front hub there. That's pretty accurate. Now with the cranks, I've got a Shimano crank set on, so there's no real easy way to figure the center out, but you can use the circle to get a good indication there. And rear hub, easy on the through axle. We are done, it wants the wheelbase. The wheelbase of this bike is 980 millimeters. Crank length, we know that. And there we go, we have everything we need. Happy days. Now with those numbers, we're inside, bike back in place, and the standover height is set to C. Now the markings are on the other side of the bike. You can't miss them. So we set that to height C. Scrolling down, uh, saddle height 17.9. So again, markings on the back there, 17.9, still quite high, so there's not a lot of movement there. Everything is straight. Yep, all good. Further down, setback 11.3 on the markings. Just a little bit in, and that's locked in place. Reach, 3.2. Done, and stack height, 1.2. Not a lot there, not a lot of virtual spaces. And crank length, 172.5. I've already got the flat pedals in there. And that's it. There are our numbers from the wizard from my bike. So pedaling away, it's 
close. But it's just not quite there though. Something was just... Sure, I'm not in my kit or in my bike shoes, but something just wasn't quite there. So pulling out the tape measure to double check everything from that. And I find that the seat height is set to seven, nine and five. So the seat height was overestimated by 20 millimeters. Now, not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but attention to detail, you can feel 20 millimeters on the pedal. So it was close, but not quite there. Reach, once I get a straight measurement there, was still a little further in. So I needed to push that out a little bit, just a, just a tinge, but it did underestimate the reach. That's now back to 730. So that's a lot more representative of the bike that I ride outside. And while we're at it, let's just slam that stem because it felt a little uppity. Okay, so using the base of the wizard and just the finishing touches with the tape measure, We are done. And the result? That is my fit. <laughs> That's better. So my take out from that whole process is that that wizard was pretty close with the photograph, but bring a tape measure to be millimeter perfect. Next question is time trial bike. Can I apply my time trial fit from my S-Works Shiv onto the kicker bike. Well, my shift position is pretty aggressive. My time trials are between 20 and 25 Ks where comfort really isn't a consideration. It's all about speed and getting off the bike and not having to run. So I've got a pretty aggressive position on the TT bike. I do know that my TT bike saddle is 35 mil forward than my road bike. So it's an easy change to make on the, uh, the settings that I have there on the kicker bike. The arm pad reach from center saddle to the center of the arm pad is 670 mil. And take into account the bottom bracket height from ground to the center of the bottom bracket on the kicker bike of 320 mil, so 32 centimeters. The drop of the arm pads needs to be 91 centimeters from the center of the arm pads to the ground. I often have trouble getting bikes that low. So let's see how that goes. First up, let's see how close I'm gonna get with the arm pads with the clip-ons here. And it's quite high. I'm gonna have to drop the overall bike height because these the stem is already slammed and I need the most drop possible. So it's as low as it's gonna go on the front end there, which means I'm gonna to have to really pull the saddle up. So I pushed in three and a half centimeters forward and the saddle is also pushed up beyond the minimum insert. So just don't tell Wahoo that. This is just what I need to do to get my position sorted. Okay, clip on bars on, reach, not quite there. I'm gonna to have to push the pads a little further forward. All good for that, both sides done. And, okay, reach is good for the elbows. And height-wise, we're still probably two and a half centimeters or 25 mil too high. So not quite there for my specific outdoor position with what we're working with here. So a close look at what we're working with here at the minimum front end setting for now without any other hacks in play and with what I'm working with. Just some pretty cheap clip-on bars, just to get my torso into that TT position and my shoulders in the right spot. And you can see back here, I am uh, outside range. Shh, it's just a test. Okay, close enough, near enough. Let's jump on and see if this feels like my time trial bike. And it's not bad, to be honest. See, my back is pretty flat. But what would do it? even more is if we could just tilt the bike a little further forward and really drop that front end. And I think, I think this hack is coming. This will be official soon, I'm pretty sure. So we can really drop that front end and get that position really dialed in for an aggressive bike fit. But for now, that's what we're working with. Hip angles, so pretty good. So in summary there, close, but not quite the cigar I was after. I'd probably be looking at getting a uh, adjustable stem on the front end or a negative 17 or something like that. Or maybe using a tilt hack and tilting the saddle back up to get my exact TT position dialed in on the bike if I was gonna be trading on it for anything specific in the TT realm. 
there's the cheat sheet there of all the specifications that you need to know, which I've already covered. Jumping straight down to the customizable parts there, and just a reminder, if you do swap out the stem and seat post, you will sort of mess up the wizard a little bit. So always keep a tape measure in the back pocket. And my final word of advice is listen to your body. If you've got all the measurements correct and it doesn't quite feel right, you can change the settings on this bike pretty quickly within a matter of seconds and make sure you're not in any discomfort or causing yourself any injury. So there we are, the kicker bike is built. It is set up for my fit. It's time to ride. If you wanna be alerted to that video when it comes along, when I discuss the ride feel and run it through the Llama lab test, remember to hit subscribe and thanks for watching.